It turns out that it's a day ending in Y, and therefore Boris Johnson is lying to you. He's just this week, or last week, re uh, released his new memoir, oh. Boris Johnson Unleashed, Hide Your Wives, Hide Your Daughters. <laughs> and uh, it's turned out to be an overwhelming bestseller, selling over 42,000 copies. Of course, it's uh, sold less than half of what Tony Blair's memoir sold in its opening week, because of course it did, but it's outpacing a few of the others. and. As such, he's Basically doing. Trusted it. Huh? Yeah, yeah, not that surprising. He's doing the media rounds, going around doing interviews, speaking about some of the contents of the book, which have some interesting insights into why it was that he decided to betray the country and flood our uh, uh, flood Britain with hundreds of thousands of third worlders who are completely dependent on the state to be able to feed themselves. Boris Johnson explains the knife in your back. Pretty much, and of course absolves himself of any responsibility for it, because yeah. why would he do that? He was only the Prime Minister. I know. Images have emerged on lines of copies of the memoir in shops being positioned next to or covered by titles such as The Idiot, Entitlement, Surrounded by Liars and Surrounded by Idiots, The Psychology of Stupidity, and How They Broke Britain by James O'Brien otherwise known as James O'Gammon. That's a, one of our favourite books, isn't it? It really is. A YouGov poll po uh, published today found that many Britons do not believe the claims made in Unleashed. No kidding. <laughs> so nobody believes the book that he has written. And sadly, it also has managed to infiltra uh, infiltrate Swindon. Here he is as God. we were walking past Waterstones earlier today. We had Boris. There he is. You can't quite see it, but if you zoom out again, you see the top of how you broke Britain down there. Yeah, and also Boris Johnson's book, The Churchill Factor. And also Nadine Doris's book, The Plot, which I have read. How did you find it? Um, there it actually is kind of interesting, because uh, she basically fingers Gove as being part... Of, but, An evil mastermind? Yeah, basically part of a... It, it's a series of WhatsApp groups that Gove controls that brings in the sort of um, outsiders in the Tory party into a coalition to kind of be an internal insurrection against anything... You usurp anything that the internal Tory party don't yeah, yeah. want happening. Well, yeah, yeah. And it's not even that... She she basically views them as a kind of long-standing sleeper agent to destroy the Conservative Party, to destroy Britain. Which maybe he is. I mean, I wouldn't... Perhaps. Pull that out. Interestingly enough, there is somebody who doesn't mention Michael Gove. We've mentioned him twice already now, and that is James O'Gammon himself in How They Broke Britain, which we've done a book club on because somebody sent us a copy in, and I decided to go through a trial by fire and descend into the heart of darkness and actually read it. And it's rubbish, but if you want to learn more about it, and I think it's well worth it because it was a very entertaining discussion, you should subscribe to the website and check out the video that we have done on it. And, but it is weird, though, you mentioned that, that I don't think he mentioned, uh, because each of the chapters is dedicated to a particular figure in yeah. British politics. It comes up on his Twitter feed. Yeah, th but why doesn't he speak about Gove? You would think that Gove would be somebody very relevant to talk about. It is also worth mentioning as well, a Lotus Eater's subscription is cheaper than the book itself. Yes. Yes. And a much better use of your money. That's true. Yes. Much more valuable. And if people do want to continue sending us in leftist texts like this, the other books by James O'Brien, like the very humbly titled How to Be Right, or the books by Otto English, uh, who has me blocked on Twitter, please keep it that way. Um, Elon's going to remove that. You can... <sighs> Elon's gonna, no, I, no blocking. What happened to Elon putting things up to a democratic poll before he actually I made did. the changes? I feel that he's kind of done a bait and switch on Philosopher that. Philosopher King, yes. No, no. <laughs> terrible idea. If I've blocked we, somebody, appealing, I don't want to see it. Are we appealing to a popular delusion here, Harry? Uh, I am, when, I am <laughs> I'm, I'm appealing to Elon Musk keeping his word, mm. which is perhaps foolish of me. But yeah, we do have a P.O. box, so if you want to torture us with other leftist texts, I will probably end up reading them. Feel free to send them into us, because I'm not spending my own bloody money on them. But one of the interesting things from this Boris Johnson round of interviews and the information that he's uh, included in Unleashed is he speaks about his reasons for the quadrupling of immigration into the country following uh, during COVID. I was about to say following COVID, but then I remembered, no, 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 the borders should have been closed, seeing as everybody was locked in their own homes, but instead he decided to open the floodgates. And the reason for that is apparently we needed to deal with inflation. Oh. It was a deliberate policy choice, he understood, and if I read the excerpt here, Johnson put in place a points-based immigration system that pumped up net annual migration to the UK by around 400,000 people. 
which was one of the main re uh, concerns insane. of reform voters. This, he claims, was because his government had to deal with inflation after the pandemic, and that meant getting in hands to do the work to prevent wage costs spiraling. So the excuse being given is literally, I had to depress your wages. We had huge inflation, so employers would have had to pay you more. We didn't want that. So we had to depress your wages. So what he's effectively saying here is, we locked you down, yeah, and therefore now we have to flood you with infinity Indians. Yeah, no, no. We, we, we forced you to stay at home. We closed all of your businesses. So we had to print a load of money, or else you would have starved to death. And now we have to bring in infinity migrants, or else you're going to get a fair wage. Yep, it was to save... <laughs> it, Thanks, Boris. Uh. It was to save the economy that he did it. Let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth when he appeared on television defending this. You've got mass migration in this country, which on, under your watch spirals well, let, okay, let's, basically out of control. Let's, well, let's, 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 you can understand why lots of deal, Tories have deserted ooh, your let's, party. Yeah, but let's deal with that, because it's perfectly true that when I was Prime Minister, uh, migration went up and down. It went down dramatically during the pandemic. Of course it did, because we well, well, knocked okay. it all up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, so as we came out, what happened was that we had a nightmare where we couldn't stack the shelves and the, we couldn't get, fill the stations with, uh, the petrol stations with uh, with petrol. Everybody was freaking out. You know, I remember every business group, every department of state was saying, we need more pairs of hands to get things done. Yeah, that, wasn't, and, that, wasn't, and, and, that wasn't the promise of the referendum, though, was and, it? It wasn't the promise of Brexit. Yeah, it was controlling but, our borders but, and but limiting migration. Immig immigrate, but uh, inflation... Is the is a huge destroyer of prosperity of investment, and you know you're 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 too young. Remember the 1970s? I remember it was absolutely appalling, and you get into a, an inflationary mm. spiral, and it, it saps the the strength of the economy completely. It saps people's uh, prosperity. It's a disaster. But you can see so, so, the, so, we, so, we, so we had Nigel. to so we had to get inflation down. And yes, I would accept that for that year uh, 2022, uh, the numbers were very high, partly because we also had. Um, the Ukrainians, we had, uh, 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 quite rightly, a lot of people from Afghanistan, a lot of people from Hong Kong. Uh, plus, the, the, the Migration Advisory Committee said, well, we needed a lot of people to help with social care, we needed a lot of stat shelves and all things. We need to keep... They've never knowingly told... Now, shut now, the those now, guys, now, now, of course, those decisions, in hindsight, we, we've learned, we can say... Well, we, we got it wrong, or the, the MAC got it wrong. I got it. You know, I did actually authorise those. They, did, you know, they, were, they were taken by So you made, you made, others. You made, you made it go but, but because of Brexit, we're able to get it right in future. So you can see and, why and, Brexit <laughs> voters are confused by and, this. Uh, I think that's all you need to hear. That's, that's so literally th thank God. The, government, the UK government's consistent line since about 1750. You know, well, uh, we can get it right in future. Yeah, okay. Right. Do you like that though? The complete abdication of all responsibility. Well, oh, no, no, no. well, it was. It, it, well, he said he got it wrong, but also yeah. he only got it wrong because obviously they had the pandemic to deal with, and then after the pandemic, it was business leaders saying, "Oh, there's no way that we can use all the people who are already here and unemployed because they lost their jobs in the pandemic to stack shelves." No, we need th hundreds of thousands more people, and then it was the migration advisory committee. So he's saying, "Well, it was all of these people." I'll take a little bit of responsibility and say, "Yeah, I got it wrong." Or maybe they got it wrong yes i mean you were the one in charge making the decisions but at least we can agree that you were wrong that's the yes thing, right? well ultimately he's responsible for the advice that he's given and follows up on yes so by externalizing it he's just abdicating his own responsibility yeah. yes and i will give some credit like, sorry just oh go on just it, it's it's marginally better than kamala harris but not by much mm. you know we're still way below an acceptable bar of what our politicians should be acting like at least Boris did make, you know, his, his sentences actually made grammatical sense in the English sure. language. At least Boris also being a journalist probably wrote his own book, unlike Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. as we found out yesterday through Chris Rufo's yeah, expose. Steal half of it. Yeah, I will also give credit to the academic agent who predicted that this was going to be the reason given quite a few months ago, back in July now, branding it as human quantitative easing. Yeah, he didn't coin this phrase, though. No, no, he, di he didn't, but there is a good term for it, for what's being described here, evil as it is, and he ended up saying that although each individual British person has been made worse mm. off, the extra people partly, if you examine the figures, offset the inflationary effects of the excess money printing during COVID, and he uses various metrics, such as the price of apples and such, to prove it. And you can really tell that, yeah, people have been made wor uh, worse off, because... Uh, if you look at the graphs, 
I like this graph. Yeah, it is a good graph. You've used it before. Mm. Uh, real net domestic per product per capita, so this is GDP per capita, is completely stagnant. Yep. It yeah. dropped during COVID and then has remained completely stagnant ever since. And so this, this is during is, big periods of inflation. This is the best measure to assess people's sort of quality of life in economic terms, really. And as you can see, it's not really got any better since 2008. So thank you very much, Boris, for saving the economy by keeping people as poor as possible. Britain is a, basically a third world country at this point, or at least a second world country. Yeah, large parts of it. Uh, Look on at the, that stagnation. Yep. Yeah, on the international stage, we are a laughing stock yeah. because of how poor we are compared to how powerful we should be on the world stage. Of well, course, should be some we, we have such levels of soft power, and yet people... <clears throat> are not getting richer, people, their lives aren't getting better, and Boris Johnson is still using the excuse of, well, it would have been far worse if I didn't do this. But the thing is, I don't think his excuse making, shockingly enough, is the full story. Really? I know, right? Because uh, all you can do, it's very, very simple, yeah. is uh, look at the breakdown of the figures of people coming in. Mm. So if it was all for people working, what are the why are most of them not working yeah why do we actually have almost as many work dependents coming in as work visas being issued and then about half the amount of that for study dependents so and then about two fifth of them are actually working yeah jesus christ about that we've got 230,000 family visas yeah being issued. So what we needed to save the economy was a roughly about 402,000 dependents coming into the country, not contributing anything. Good point. And then all of these asylum claims, or over 250,000, Hong Kong, U Ukraine and humanitarian. I just can't it's understand study dependents. I'm going to come over and study in a foreign country. Yeah, bring your mum with you. What? What are you talking about? Well, who, who's going to make my uh, turkey dinosaurs? Well, good who's going to get my nuggies for me while I'm studying? <laughs> the Hassan Piker conundrum. And we also know from the work visas, if you look at the work that Connor has done recently, when he was looking at some of the care visas that had been put forward, where it was 77,000 visas issued and only 11,000 positions filled, that means maybe at most I can estimate if those figures are representative of all of the work visas issued, maybe 15 to 20% of those people have actually gone into the economy in any meaningful sense if they've not been sucked into the black market illegal economy instead. And of course, the people who are actually working as well may not be working uh, a form of employment and are actually more likely to be working a form of employment that doesn't contribute to the UK economy at all within their lifetime and they're actually a net detriment economically speaking. It's the golden era of Deliveroo, though. Oh, excellent. Oh, yes. There's also another factor to <clears throat> consider here, which is that Boris's entire premise is based off of the fact that he introduced these new immigration point systems off of the back of COVID. Yeah. That's a complete lie. This was put forward at the beginning of 2020, prior to COVID, where he introduced the new points-based system, which, if you check this article, opened up... Uh, let me see, introduced an immigration point system that opened up half of all jobs in the UK to foreign workers, lowered salary and skilled thresholds for migrants, and lifted the cap on migrants altogether. And that included t taking it down from a salary threshold of 30 grand to 25,600 pounds, and reduced the skills threshold from graduate to A-level. If I get arrested with a knife in my back, do I count as carrying the knife? I'm just curious just really matters in this day and age. I can't believe we can't stack shelves. I don't believe you. It's not true. It's obvious that we can stack shelves without importing the third world. I just, We've got and teenagers. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if businesses felt that uh, having to slightly raise, uh, raise their wages to encourage these people to take these jobs, I think that's a bullet that they can take. Yes. Well, the, the frustrating thing is, even if the argument um, was true that they contributed to the economy, which they don't, even on the social grounds, it's still not worth it. Was it was it the OBR as well that put out a recent graph showing the con net contributions mm -hmm. of different types of uh, migrants to the UK economy over an entire lifetime and low-skilled workers, which clearly Boris Johnson opened this country up to, never contribute. In, the, the, in, they in, need the, to the walk same, the, the street the and in, look at the quality of person yeah, the that's, same that's in here. The Danish as well when they, they've done their studies. But you are right, Josh. Even if they were a net economic benefit, culture and, um, and uh, cohesion is something else that you can't really put a price on. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, and again, 
obviously he's lying. We've got the facts to prove it. And also, this is what he has always wanted. I've done a segment on this before, but just to go over a little bit of the information, Boris Johnson, for more than 12 years, and this is back from 2015, and you can go back to 2008, so that's 16 years ago, uh, he's always been calling for an amnesty of illegal migrants. He said in this interview in 2015 that he is pro-immigration, said it was a shame that illegal migrants can only earn money on the black market because they can't pay taxes. And he told LBC, I'm the great-grandson of Turkish immigrants. Where would my family be if London hadn't given sanctuary to my great-grandfather? Oh, don't make me dream, Boris. So I'm... T- I, lo- I love the reason. Oh, well, we need to give them amnesty. Why? Because they're not paying taxes. Really, that's 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 the problem with the illegals. And could we not deport them, not, and then they wouldn't be a taxes. burden on the system? Yeah, uh, I mean, that that would be my preference. Yeah, and he said so. I'm totally in favour of people <clears throat> being able to make their lives in this country. Similarly, during his vote leave campaign, his entire premise for why we needed to leave the EU was so that we wouldn't have to have pro EU migration coming into the country, and we could open it up to even more people. He told a vote leave rally, "I'm not only pro immigration, I'm pro immigrants." And I am in favour of an amnesty of illegal immigrants who have been here for more than 12 years. You know, the ones who've managed to evade the authorities the longest, so the sneakiest ones. Clever, though. It's like an enormous game of hide-and-seek, and I guess they would win. It's like yeah. Grand Theft Auto, isn't it? You hide away from the police eventually, they just give up. It's yeah, like, you're, yeah. Still, uh, you're okay. You're Boris is now. like, well, your star level's gone down to zil, so <laughs> here you go. Uh, they're unable to contribute to the economy. I'll tell you why I'm in favour of this, because it's the humane thing to do, and it's the economically rational thing I, to do. Just a quick thing. If you can't pay taxes, you can't contribute to the economy. It's obviously wrong as well. Like The, the economy is just the sale of goods and services. right? The, and so <clears throat> what he's saying there is, if there were no taxes, then there would be no economy. It's like, no, no, that's so totally wrong and so totally backwards. You know, you the sort of libertarian economists be like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? What are you talking about? If anything, like, it's the opposite. Yeah, these people actually contribute more to the economy. Maybe if I was in the dark economy, I'd be doing better as well. What the hell's going on with our screens? The um, dark energy <clears throat> Boris. Yeah, I know, yeah. You said the, the, the forbidden word, taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Josh's energy, yeah. it's spiked. <laughs> Poseidon's angry. Uh, So, don't believe the thing that Boris Johnson said. Never give him another chance. Never fall for his lies and tricks. He has always wanted to destroy this country and flood you. And sadly, following Brexit, he got the perfect opportunity and immediately did so. I hope you appreciated that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters. And if you want to see what else we're up to, you can watch our book club on How They Broke Britain by James O'Brien. Carl, Harry and I basically go mad discussing the ravings of a lunatic and if you want to see what else we're up to you can always follow us on twitter thank you very much for watching and goodbye